Wheels, you'll probably be at the ballpark a bit this weekend. It is Hall of Fame or Wall of Fame weekend for the Phillies. I got to be honest, I wasn't crazy about this year's selections, Bake McBride and Ron Reed, but having said that, they were both pretty important parts huh. of that 1980 team, were they not? Oh, my. Unbelievable. You know, I know everybody wants to, they, well, you know, there they are. They're shaking bacon and, and big slinky, as we used to call them, the Ron <laughs> Reed. They're really good players. I mean, Bake McBride, what couldn't he do? What couldn't he do above average? And you think about it, you know, even with bad knees, he could run like the wind. He could hit home runs. He could hit for average. He was a great outfielder and could really throw. And, and Ron Reed used to, oh, boy, the way they used to use him, and they would use him for two innings, three innings. He could pitch him two, three days in a row. Back in those days, you know how he used to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I know people are saying, well, why would you have these guys? You know, eh, let's let's start getting Utley and Rollins and, and ha relax. <laughs> you're all going to be on the wall of fame. I know Pete, I know nowadays we have the attention span of a field mouse, you know, and, and, and nobody has any patience anymore for anything. Those guys will be on the wall of fame. These two guys ask their teammates what they meant to the 1980 yeah. Phillies. And what did the 1980 Phillies mean to a lot of people like me who was lucky enough to be around it. And those were my guys because we were around the same age. A lot of us, you don't have that 1983 team or that World Series and that uh, parade without guys like Ron Reed and Baker. Right? It doesn't happen. Yeah. And, you know, they're also going to honor Dan Baker this weekend as yeah. well, which will be is great. And, uh, uh, Wills, I know you have to be happy that Pete Rose is going to be in town. I know there's a lot of controversy about that, Bill, and I understand that. I don't want to go there with that. First of all, you just put the thing up about Dan. There's a good human being right there. And, you know, I've known him since 1972. My first year was 71, and Art Wolf was a PA announcer that year. Danny came along in 72, and for, for the years before I worked uh, on the air, I used to be in the scoreboard room with him and Dennis Lehman and a couple other people, and we used to get in a lot of trouble with some stuff we put on the board. Paul Owens would get mad at us and all that. But I'm so happy for Dan Baker that this organization is honoring him because he is just the salt of the earth, good human being. You mentioned Pete. People are going to have their opinions on Pete. We had a show down in Clearwater last year that I was lucky enough to MC, where Pete was there and Bob Boone, Bull, and Larry Ball. And it was fabulous. It was just great. Pete has no censor, no filter, never has. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully, you know, don't give him too much live time doing something. But <laughs> to have him there and to have the fans decide what they want to react when he comes out on the field, that's up to the fans. And I totally understand all the negatives involved in that. But thankfully, I don't have to talk about that or make those kind of decisions. He's my friend, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him again over the weekend. And I think a lot of people that come out on Sunday will be really happy to see him again. And, and 1980 doesn't happen without Pete Rose. Amen. You know, I just mentioned those two guys, you know, Bacon and, and Ron Reed. And Pete Rose changed everything. Those guys will tell you that. You know, he was there in 79, but all those pitchers got hurt, and the Pirates had that magic season. But 1980, no, he kept guys grounded because that season, you know, was not a walk in the park. I mean, Dallas exploded at him at one time. Paul Owens went crazy one time in, in San Francisco after Gary Maddox dropped that fly ball in San Diego when he didn't have his sunglasses on. And then we went yeah. to – I mean, that that was a tough thing. To, we had to win two out of three in Montreal that weekend to mm -hmm. get there. So that team had a, had a lot uh, a lot of adversity they had to overcome. And having Pete Rose around oh, with that calm way about him and a guy who had won before really helped a lot. Wills, I got to ask you about this guy because I'm sure you've met him, talked to him uh, over the years. The late, great Vin Scully we lost at age 94 yesterday. What are your memories of Vin Scully? You know, Chet, the number one, you know, you won't talk about him as a professional, what he was like calling the game and his voice and all those kind of things, sure. But for those of us who are lucky enough to know him personally, one of the nicest, most gracious human beings I've ever met in my life. And, you know, real quick, I'll tell this story because I'm so happy about it. my last year on the road was 2013. So we're in uh, we're in L.A. and it's a Sunday. It's the last game. I don't know this is the last time I'm going to see Vinny because I don't know they're going to can me after the season. You know, I didn't know that was coming. So I, and I'm not name dropping, but I'm good friends with a, an actor named Christopher Guest and his wife's name is Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah. So they came up to visit me in the press box that day because I'd left them tickets and they're standing there and I'll never forget Vinny comes over to me and he says, 
wheels. He says, is that Jamie Lee Curtis? And I, <laughs> I said, it is. He said, well, I knew her mother very well. Of course, that's Janet Leahy. Uh, yeah. I knew her very well, and I would love to meet her. I introduced Vinny to Jamie Lee. They talked for about 15 minutes. They laughed and had so Later on, I ran into Vinny. He said, that was one of the greatest moments in my life wow. that you introduced me to Jamie Lee Curtis. So I, you know, I thought about that story again today uh, when I heard that Vinny had passed away. And I have a lot of great memories of being around him because when you would see him, it was like you were the only person in the room. He always knew your name uh, and he always wanted to ask how you were. Uh, a wonderful, wonderful man and a great talent. And our buddy Kevin Cooney posted this last night right after uh, wow. the news came out. He he had some amazing yeah. memorable calls. I forgot that he called the catch, Joe yeah. Montana to Dwight Clark. I went back on YouTube today and listened to it, yeah. watched it. Yeah, wow, what a career. 67 years calling Dodgers games, too. Yeah, leaving, uh, you know, in Brooklyn when he was with Red Barber and, and going out to Los Angeles and being there. Hey, the players used to tell you what it was like. Uh, you remember back in the days uh, – when we had transistor radios at the ballpark. Yeah. When you went to Dodger Stadium, that's all you heard. You heard Vinny doing the game. Yeah. So the players used to hear that. Uh, Joe Kerrigan was telling me today it was the most amazing thing. He's on the mound. He's in his windup, and he hears Vince go. Here's Joe Kerrigan wind up in the pitch. He says, it was amazing to hear his voice, you know, describing what I was doing. And I remember Mike Schmidt telling me one time what it was like to walk up the home plate and hear that voice say, here comes this young kid from Dayton, No. Uh, from Dayton, Ohio, you know, who who's a big prospect for the Phillies. And Smitty's thinking, oh, man, I hope I don't go up there and just punch out, you know, in front of him and all that. <laughs> uh, it just showed you, you know, before the years of the headsets and all, that when you went to Dodger Stadium, all you heard out there were those radios going with Vin's voice on there. It was, it was a wonderful thing. He, he He's a great credit to our game. And and it, as you just said, Chad, he, he did a lot of other things too, World Series and All-Star Games and all that other – all those other things that he did. He he was a consummate professional and just just a great guy.